Well, we have been um, talking with people about and telling the story of the goodness of God. And uh, I have the opportunity today uh, to talk with Zach Newman, who uh, will be sharing his story today. So Zach, um, God has been at work in you for a number of years and prepared you for ministry with us. And why don't you just kind of talk about how that, um, you know, where your journey started, where you felt like God was, was moving you in, uh, in the area of ministry. Yeah, so my wife and I moved down to Douglas County in 2004. We bought a little pizza restaurant in Myrtle Creek, and I started to run that, um, and we started to build a life together here. Mm -hmm. Several years later, though, it, it got stale. What I was doing got stale, and I, I would plead with God for purpose and calling, and he was silent. Mm -hmm. um, and one morning... When I was actually listening and quiet, mm. <laughs> which is hard for me, um, all of a sudden I, he wasn't as silent as I thought he was, and I really felt like God was telling me that my purpose and calling was here. Like it wasn't some magical thing. It was the pizza shop. It was the people that he gave me to steward them, and I started uh, viewing employees differently, um, and they weren't just a cog in the wheel for my dollars and cents. <laughs> It was the reason I was there, and um, I loved that job and started to work with the people on a spiritual level and even led someone to Christ in the dough room that worked for me and helped them through crisis into their life, and I loved it so much. Um, but I wanted to be used, what I felt was like, to a greater degree. Mm. And um, I wanted to move forward in what I loved about the pizza shop but in a little differently. Mm. And so God led me to joining the staff here at Family Church. Yeah, I remember that when we first sat down and began to talk about the opportunity that we had uh, to come on and be you know, one of the uh, directors of our, our, our life groups. Uh, and, uh, and then after the interview, um, seeing how you were gonna be a great fit for us and how you came on, um, and then as in the process, seeing you grow into becoming a pastor here, um, what would you say was some of the things that God, um, you know, taught you in the process of being on staff here that, that um, again, played into your calling, into your ministry? What was some things that he, he, he led you? Yeah, I, um, oh, learned so much. Um, God Family church was my ability to learn to a greater degree. It was like uh, drinking from a fire hose. <laughs> um, I remember my first day on staff, and we finished a meeting, and you were introducing me to different things, and you, and you said, all right, any more questions? And I said, yeah, what do I do? <laughs> and, and you said, learn and get to know and love people. I thought there had to be something more, um, <laughs> but it turns out it's a, it, simple as that. And so this gave me space to hone my craft, mm -hmm. to, um, to learn to have coworkers, which for me was new. Um, it was I ran things and people listened to me. Now I had to convince people <laughs> of something I got to work with wonderful volunteers and I had staff pouring into me and me pouring into them and it was very much iron sharpening iron. Mm. Yeah. Finding a purpose and a calling has been a big deal for you. I mean, it's something that you have wrestled with. And uh, how would you define, you know, that calling and how has, um, you know, some people think that a calling is for, you know, whatever he calls you to, it's, it's there for, for life. Kind of walk through what your understanding and how you've played that, how that's played out in your own life. Yeah, some people calling is to a lifetime. Um, my wife is a great example of that. She knew she was going to be a teacher; that God was calling her to be a teacher from elementary age. She's a teacher, loves it. That's all she wants to do. Man, that drives me bonkers uh, because God has using me very differently, where I'm called to different things in different seasons. And um, 
for a while, the calling to different things in different seasons felt like that was a brokenness in me. It, it wasn't like there was something wrong with that instead of that's how God has wired me. Someone that loves change. Um, my wife can't stand change. And so like there's, there is how God knit me. And so I think I define calling as now a little differently than I used to. I used to define calling that there was this big, huge thing. So, and I would find, and it was vocationally, and I would find my vocation and all would be well. And that was the missing piece. But now I define calling as seeing God at work in whatever I am doing. Mm -hmm. Good. And that changes everything. You know, while you were on staff, um, we had some real conversations about where we were as a church and where we wanted to go as a church. <clears throat> and one of the things was is to somehow um, help people in a greater way know that they are on mission 24-7 as opposed to um, uh, the highest level being a person on staff. <clears throat> as we as we talked through that, how did that play out in your um, process to feeling the call of God to step off of staff in, back into the workforce? Because the calling was to come on staff, and then there was, seemed to be this new work that God was doing for you to go back into the marketplace. Um, just kind of walk us through that, what God began to change in your own heart in that way. You sold the vision too well. <laughs> um, I, I did not realize that I still, I think we all have false beliefs um, in certain points in our life. And, and um, the wonderful thing about the journey of God is he, he does not allow those to stay. Like they run up against things. And one of my false beliefs was that I didn't, wasn't even fully aware of that it was a greater calling to be a pastor, that that was somehow a little more significant. Um, and as we wrestled with what the vision was going to be, what, what the purpose of family, what God put family church here for, um, and came down to people helping people find and follow Jesus, was a shattering, slowly, of that false belief mm-hmm. that um, I didn't need to be a pastor to serve God, that... that to my fullest potential, that it really didn't matter what I was doing if God called me to it. Mm -hmm. And I could see it in that light of being a person, helping other people find and follow Jesus. It just was so beautifully simple that I craved to do it, I would say to a greater degree than you can as a staff member. I can remember when Zach came into my office and shared that he felt the call to go back into the marketplace and off of our staff. And I remember my own, um, my own heart and what I, I think I told you was, um, uh, you know, it was, I didn't necessarily want to hear you step off staff, but I was applauding that you were following God back into the marketplace. And I, I think had some conversation that said, well, you can be an example of what we're trying to help other people see that you whether you're on staff or whether you're you're called into wherever it's not like it's all the same we're all in ministry and so having you know you were in ministry prior to coming in on staff you're still in ministry even though you've stepped off staff how would you um you know how would you describe that um, that understanding, which I think has brought clarity in your own life, and how what would you what would you say to encourage somebody else who's who might be kind of toying with um, their importance of ministry? Hmm. Well, that was a whirlwind. Um, I remember clearly my biggest concern um, because you have had such a role and have a role in my life. I was so concerned with disappointing you, that I almost didn't listen to the voice of God. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was a great, that was freedom for me 
to, for you to speak what you had already spoken, but in a moment that I really needed to hear it, it was a cementing, cementing point for me. Mm. Um, I think the encouragement would, uh, would be that with calling, I think there's always fog, mm. that it's as you're pursuing God, as you're pursuing what he has for you, there, at least for my life, there hasn't been some great awakening moment that all of a sudden all was well and everything was perfect in my life. And it, it was more, it's more, has been more, oh, this feels, this feels more right. This shoe fits better. I can see now how God's using me. And then as I'm moving along with that better fit of shoe, then all of a sudden it starts to wear a little bit. And I go, wait, I think there's a little better fit. And there's almost these movings and redirecting. And that has brought me great security because my biggest concern has been missing out on the calling of God. Mm. And our Father's way too gracious yeah. for that. That There's not this missing out. It's just gentle recorrecting. Mm. And um, this recorrecting and seasons to it right. that he, he sharpens us mm. um, for, with our gifts and our talents as we're giving them to, to, yeah. to live out the calling. Yeah. How have you... Um, how are you seeing your ministry now that you are off staff and how have you seen it blossom and what, what are you really enjoying and where is it clear in, in, your, in your purpose and calling now? It's gotten weird. No. <laughs> it's uh, like I'm just doing a lot of different things that I didn't think were possible, but it's in this one-on-one -on -one coaching where it, God is really working in my life and I'm realizing that that's my unique fit is is helping key leaders get, become stronger and what's neat is it's coming up in all different areas of my life some it's people in ministry some people it's their business owners some they work for me and they're raising up as leaders but this um, being able to be a voice that honestly you were for have were and have been and will be for me um, is being that for others. And so that's how I'm seeing a little bit of the calling play out. Mm -hmm. um, and with my family yeah. and parenting. And it's kind of neat. As I think as we step into the calling of God more and more, we see how it is everywhere. Mm -hmm. That has been my unique experience that I've loved. Even in... The employees that you have at Figaro's, you've always had, you know, you were talking about that kind of awakening. But now, um, and I can remember conversations as you were sharing what you felt would, would happen and, and how you would give more time and coaching to your employees. Even that mm -hmm. is what your ministry is about. As valuable as that is compared to what you were doing, it's, it's all ministry, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, we're all like an onion. Like mm -hmm. there's there's these layers and and peels to it. Where um, again, the false beliefs are not even really aware. Like I wasn't aware of how I was vi really viewing a pastoral position as as greater, but that became aware. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's the same thing with my employees. I, what I was say saying about how I was working with them before staff. Um, and seeing their potential and seeing these things and then but realizing I'm seeing that to a greater degree now yeah. um, I thought I was viewing them in the best light then mm -hmm. but it's even greater now and yeah well Zach I appreciate you being able to tell your story about the goodness of God and how he has worked through your journey both prior to coming on staff coming on staff and now back into the in the marketplace where you are having huge impact. And uh, I, I just appreciate uh, you being able to share that story, and I hope that was encouraging to you as you hear that. You are good.